is 42 degrees this morning. <laughs> I was telling someone earlier today, I had the heat on and the air yesterday. <laughs> Couldn't figure out which one that I needed to have. Welcome to One Community Church. We're so glad that you're here to worship the Lord this day in spirit and in truth. I'm Von Lewis. I'm the pastor for the contemporary service. As you remain standing, can you please join me in our call to worship for Psalm 34, verses 1, 2, and 3. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Why are you still searching 
several announcements this morning. The church office will be closed tomorrow. I can't remember the holiday, but it's a, it's a holiday tomorrow. <laughs> so the church office will be closed. First steps. Thank you. <laughs> Our next new members first steps class will be held on Sunday, October the 15th at 1215. Lunch will be provided as well as child care if needed. You can sign up online or by calling the office. This is a great opportunity to learn more about One Community Church and the Presbyterian Church. We will, we will receive our new members on Sunday, October the 29th. Women's Fall Fellowship Fun Night. Ladies, mark your calendars for Friday, October 20th, and bring your friends for a fun night with lots of laughter, fall treats to eat, and bingo. The cost is $10 and includes food, bingo, and prizes. Hope you can come. And our one service Sunday is October 29th. And so there'll only be one worship service at 11 o'clock that morning. And we'll have a potluck luncheon following the service with chili and baked potato bar. Please bring sides or desserts to share. And then lastly, a, a announcement regarding the br breakfast club. Next Saturday, October the 14th, the breakfast club will begin a new study titled Rescue. It focuses on the spiritual skills we need in order to help each other understand and overcome the trials and turmoil of life in today's fallen world. We'll have, a guest, we'll have guest speakers throughout the series and devotionals from the, the book Rescue by Justin Camp. The Breakfast Club meets on the second and fourth Saturday of each month at 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Register online at our website or call the church office or speak to Greg Williams, who is le leading the group. And I just once again, just as a reminder, uh, please be in prayer regarding giving of your, your time and your, your treasures and talents and, and, and serving God by serving others. It's just amazing how God will meet your needs when you give cheerfully. 
and the Lord just has just been continued to, to bless us. We entered a, a raffle. Uh, one of our neighbors was selling tickets for a, a nonprofit uh, regarding uh, mental health concerns, and we got a, Lori got a, a text message saying that we had 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 won a, the grand prize for it. And I'm, just, I'm so skeptical about everything. And right away, I thought, this is a scam. This is a scam. It wasn't a scam. We won a trip to Hilton Head, paid for for a week. <laughs> and just, and Lori always says, Vaughn, you have such a, a, a big heart. I always want to help everybody. And, but just throughout my life, I've seen that when you give cheerfully, God just meets needs all kinds of ways. We've just been having all kinds of blessings, you know, come upon us. And Vaughn, you just have to be more open to realize that God's blessing you and that it's not a scam. <laughs> so just please be in prayer about giving. And there's a number of ways that, that you can give financially to the, all the wonderful ministries at our church. You, there's an offering box in the back where you can place your offering there. You can also mail in an offering and you can also give online. So uh, give with a cheerful heart because you just can't beat God giving. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your faithfulness to us, Father. Father, we truly cannot beat you in giving. And Father, I thank you for your living word and just what a blessing that it's been just preparing and, and studying and, and preaching on your literal word. And Father, I just pray that, that for everyone that's here this morning, that you would meet spiritual needs in their life. And Father, I pray that we not only be hearers of your word, but much more importantly, that we would be doers of your word, Father, and we will just see how you will just bless us in a tremendous way. For us in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray all these things. Amen. I'll be preaching this morning from Psalm 119, verses 9, 10, and 11. And it's, and it's truly been a blessing uh, these past few weeks preaching on, on God's living word. It, it, it really has been a a blessing for me, and I hope that it's, it's been a, a blessing for you. Over the years, one thing that I've really seen regarding God is that God is a jealous God. When you read in the Old Testament, you constantly see where, where Israel was being punished for idolatry. And throughout Scripture, you see where, where there's an emphasis on putting God first in our, in our lives. And when I was preparing for today's message, Psalm 119, and I didn't actually know this today. Some of you maybe already knew this, but I, I didn't know this until this week, that Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. And it's, and, and it's not even close with it as far as the number of verses and words for the, what comes in second place. Psalm 119 has 176 verses and 2,445 words. And there was nothing, no other chapter in the Bible is even close to that. And the theme of Psalm 119 is knowing and obeying God's words. And it's not a coincidence that the chapter that's dealing with knowing and obeying God's word is the longest chapter in the Bible. God desires for us to spend time reading his word and meditating on his word and, and memorizing his word. And as I'll be preaching on this morning, protecting or treasuring the Lord's word in our heart. And so often with the Bible and just with, with God's will, situations happen. And you always have some people say, ah, it's just a coincidence. It doesn't really mean anything. But yes, it does. God truly desires for us to spend as much time as we can in his word because he, he knows how it will benefit us so much. So it's not a coincidence that Psalm 119 is the longest chapter. And of all the, the chapters in the, in the Bible, I can't even tell you how many the chapters there are. It's not a coincidence that Psalm 119 that deals with obeying God's word is the longest one. 
I really have been emphasizing this a lot, especially when I'm preaching from the Old Testament. It's so important for us to understand who God is. And without truly understanding who God is, it's hard to really trust and believe in God's words. If you're making a, a decision, whether starting a business or what job that you should take, if you're an employer and you're trying to decide what person will you hire, you want to know about that person. You want to know about that business so that you can make an informed decision. And it's the same way with, with God and his word. How can we really understand God's word if we don't understand God, who is the creator of his word? So whenever I'm preparing for a Bible study or, or preaching and there's reference to God, I was like, "Woo! we need to stop right here. We need to really focus on who God really is. When you look at Psalm 119, throughout 119, there are references to God's word, and that is, literally is God's word. And there's references to, how the, to the, how the writer of Psalms 119, and there's different thoughts on who the, who the author is, but it's, it's not definitely known for a fact other than that, that it was written by someone who was moved by the Holy Spirit and that it truly is God's word. But it's so important to stop and, and, and study that, like in the Old Testament or the New Testament, what does this mean when it says the Lord? And in verse 1, blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. And I've talked a lot about this recently. And when you, in the Old Testament, when you see the word the Lord, it's Jehovah. And in Psalm 119, Jehovah is written 24 times. And the author of Psalm 119 recognized the Lord Jehovah as the creator of the Bible. When you look at verses 1 through 12, look at all the references to God's word. It says, the law of the Lord, thy word or your word, thy commandments, thy statutes, ordinances of thy mouth, thy testimonies, and thy precepts. So it's pretty obvious that the, that the author of Psalms 119 truly believes that this is God's literal word. I had talked about last week how over 80% of Americans in the most re recent Gallup poll said they believe in God. But then only 20% believe that the Bible was literally God's word. So there's a disconnect. It's obvious that those 80% or a lot of those 80% don't truly understand who God is. Because they did, more than 20% would, be, would believe that the Bible is, is literally God's word. In verse 9, the author writes, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? Now, this message that was written is focusing on a young person, but this is interchangeable. Old people like me can also <laughs> be on that path of purity. So it's not just focusing on young people. And the author says, by living according to your word. You hear so often, I just heard someone talking about this this week, especially young people, for those of us who are older, oftentimes we'll think, I wish the things that I know now I had put into practice when I was younger. How many of you have said that before? I look back on my life, and, and you look back on, I look back on some of the mistakes that I made in my life, and I, and, and I wish that I could have a magic wand and just erase some of the mistakes that I made in my past. But I'm so thankful, though, that, that if I confess my sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. You know, and sometimes in, in life, how we perceive situations 
isn't how they really are. And if there's something that you really desire to, to do, and maybe if there's peer pressure where people are, and they, this can be for young people or for adults, where, where people are trying to pressure you to do certain things. And if you don't have someone with a biblical perspective whispering in your ear, no, you shouldn't do that. What have they taught you in, in Bible study? What have they taught you in children's church? What have your parents taught you? Then maybe we would make better decisions. You know, I know I, I sound like I'm 100 years old, but we were yesterday, uh, we were looking at some, some pictures of, of, of kids who went to, to their homecoming. And, you know, our, we have uh, my, my son's, girlfriend has children that are teenagers, so we keep up with them and, and just with their sports and what's going on in the schools. And some of the outfits that I, that I saw some of the people wearing, it was like, oh, Lord, I just had to just shake my head. And the first thing I was thinking was, I know my daughters didn't go to the dances looking like that. And not in our house. And just, it seems like every year, a few years, that, that people wear less and less clothes when they go to these different events. I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, like where are the, are the, are the parents at? And I think sometimes it's peer pressure where the parents are peer pressured by their children that, that they don't want their kids to, to feel left out. And as parents, we have to stand up for what God calls us to do. And why can't you have a good time and have on more clothes? I just, I just, when I saw the picture, I said, oh, my goodness. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I know there were, and I wasn't a Christian when I was, was a teenager. But I'm so thankful that many of my relatives were. And because of the things that they said and the expectations that they had for me, it made me make better decisions. And I know, and looking back on it, I know some of the, the things that they were telling me, it was based on God's word. And it, it, it really helped my, my life as a teenager to be better. You know, everyone you know, makes, makes mistakes. But, you know, it's, a, it's a, tr a tremendous responsibility to be a young person and to have to change your life totally and live like an adult because, because you have a child. It's such a young age, a child, you know, having a child. It's hard enough to take care of kids when you're grown, let alone when you're that young. And, you know, God forgives us of sin, but I've said this saying before. I heard a, a pastor say this many years ago that experience isn't the best teacher, but it's the only school some fools will attend. You know what? Life is much easier if you don't learn by experience and you read God's word or someone teaches you God's word and you follow that. Some of the mistakes that, you know, that, that, that I made as a young person, if, if I'd have known the Lord or more people would have talk to me about God's word. I could have avoided some mistakes that I had made. But I'm, I'm here to tell you today that if you plan your life according to God's word, because it literally is God's word, God will bless you in so many ways. And you'll be a blessing to your children and, and, and to your, your grandchildren. I'm so thankful that I do know the Lord so that I can have an impact on, on other people's children and, and, and on my grandchildren. In verse 10, the author says, I seek you with all my heart. How do you seek God with all your heart? It's so funny. I was talking with uh, my grandson, Warwick, and I can't remember what the topic we were talking about, but we had been discussing some topic 
And guess what? It popped up on my phone. And I, I said to Ward, Ward, remember we were talking about this? It came up on my phone, and he was upset. You could tell he felt violent. He said, Papa, that's just not right. And I felt the same way, too, but I kind of laughed. And I used to didn't think that our cell phones listen to us, but I know they do now because too many times when you talk about certain things, then all of a sudden you're getting ads about it, just getting flooded with it. So you better be careful that you're not saying talking about something that you really shouldn't, and then one of your kids or your spouse sees something on your phone. Then you're really in trouble. That's a whole another ball game. I will seek you with all my heart. You know, I feel like in today's world, we have so many more distractions now than we did a generation ago. You know, with, our, with the cell phones and with, with tablets, I had a, I have a, this is like a plug for, for the, the television system that we have now. It's called Platinum Plus, and it has over 4,000 channels. And I'm like, I'm almost in heaven with that. But I think, man, I spend so much time just searching through the channels, trying to find what I, I want to watch. And then with virtual reality, with, with kids on the, on, on the tablets, then you have, and I think about this all the time also with young people, and, it, and I was talking with one of my grandkids about that. They were playing on, on, a, on their virtual reality and talking to other friends, and the first thing I was thinking was, can someone who's an adult act like they're a child so they can talk to our children? And you know that goes, and I see many of you nodding your heads out there. So there are, there are a, a lot of things out there today that are, that are competing for our time and are doing very well. I notice this sometimes, and I just kind of shake my head. It's, it's called old man syndrome. And I'll see, I'll see young people when they're coming home from school, because sometimes I'll be leaving, going, out, going out or, or I, I'm going to pick up my, meet with my grandkids when they get out of school, and I'll see young people walking down the street, and they're like this. I'm thinking, the first thing I think is that, man, you're not even looking where you're going. Someone can walk up on you and mug you, and you wouldn't even know who they were. And the police asked, who was it? I don't know. What were you doing? Well, I was just looking at my phone. I see it all the time. There are so many distractions that we have today. And we need, as parents and, and guardians and, and spiritual leaders, we need to do, I think, a better job, and that's myself included, of not giving into that peer pressure and letting our kids know you need to seek the Lord more and you need to spend less time on your, on your tablet. Vaughn, you need to spend less time flipping through those 4,100 channels <laughs> trying to find sports to watch or a good movie and we need to set aside more time for seeking the Lord with all of our heart. What I love about verse 10 here, the author He says, I seek you with all my heart. And then he says, do not let me stray from your commands. And when I read that, that's a cry for, Lord, help me. I'm, I'm struggling in this area. Lord, I'm, I'm being tempted by this sin. Lord, I'm struggling with being in your word. Lord, I'm, I'm struggling there's some things in my life that maybe I shouldn't be doing. And he's crying out, saying, do not let me stray from your commands. And we all go through times in life where we're, where we're in a time of struggle. And I'm so thankful those times in my life when I've gone through times of, of struggle that I was able sometimes literally to cry out to the Lord, Lord, please help me. I need your help. There are times in our lives when we go through temptations, all different kinds of temptations. And we have to cry out to the Lord like the author did here in verse 10. Do not let me stray 
from your commands. I'm so thankful that I've cried out to the Lord before and the Lord heard my cry and prevented me from falling prey to sin. Church, we are truly, you can just see it, we are truly, I believe, in the last days. You know, one of the signs of the last days is wars and rumors of war. You know, Russia and Ukraine, now Palestine attacking Israel. The, the signs are all around us. The times are just so much more evil than they were just in, in, in recent years. Our adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. Church, we have to spend, we have to devote ourselves to God's word. We have to seek the Lord with, with all of our heart. In verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. And I like the, the New American Standard Bible where it says, your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. And this is a promise here in verse 11. If we protect, if we hide God's words or promises in our heart, and we say our heart is talking about our, and our will, our mind, and our intellect, God will honor that. That we may not sin against him. There are so many things in life that tug for our attention. And they all have a place in, you know, in our life. You know, finances. You know, we have to have money. One of my, my, one of my jokes is that if we didn't work, we'd be living on one new London road. And if you're familiar with Hamilton, that's where the bridge and the river is. So we have to work. We have to have money. You have to save for, re for retirement. There's a lot of things. You have to take care of your health. So there's so many things that we have to do that we have to put emphasis on. But the most important decision that we can make in our life is treasuring, valuing God's word and allowing it to affect every decision that we make in life. What treasures a man or a woman or a child to gain the whole world, to possess everything, and to lose your soul? Church, protect, treasure the Lord's word in your heart. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word, your literal word. And Father, I pray that as a people, we will set aside the time, Father, to hide, to protect, to treasure your word in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Almighty God, I pray that we would not be ashamed of your word, Father, and that we'd be godly examples before other people. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You can go ahead and stand up for our last song.
Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that you knew we were sinners and you still were willing to send your son to die on the cross, even knowing that some people would reject him. And Father, I thank you so much for your living word. And Father, my prayer today is that as a church, We would treasure, we would hide, we would protect your word in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. Father, I pray that we would not be ashamed of your word. Father, I pray that there's opportunities to tell others about Christ. That we'd be willing to share the greatest message that we could ever share. Heavenly Father, I pray that we would treasure your word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And now may the love of God the Father and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Have a great week.